Oh, hey guys, let's finish that fiery explosion that we've been working on. So we've got this guy going on here, and it's looking pretty good. There's a few things that I've been playing around with on this between the last tutorial and now, and I want to kind of walk you through my brain processes. Process, processes? Pro process is yeah, I want to walk you through those, all of those. So the first thing I want to do is I want to separate out these strands from that. So I've clicked on this and I right click and I can click copy frames and I say paste frames and then I hide the other layer. Now what I want to do is I want to delete all of these because remember I've got a duplicate down on that other layer and I want to do it on every frame. I just want to delete the same ones, so I'm going to check and make sure like these guys broke off here, but those were a part of it before, so I don't want to delete those. just want to keep the same strands deleted on this layer. This is a good technique whenever you want to separate out the timing of two parts of your animation. I did something similar with the Goopy Splat. So now I hide that layer and show this one, and I delete the opposite the center part. There we go. And this is too many shapes, so I'm going to use L for lasso tool. I can just lasso that up. Yeah. Get this going here, and this will get me the layer that has only the strands on it. Oh, that guy gets deleted too. And then all of those. Cool. So now if I turn on outline mode for both of these layers, I can see the difference. I can see the pink part and I can see the orange part. Uh, now that I've got them on separate layers, I want to take the orange dudes and I want to kind of compress these together so it's moving really fast at first and then it slows down. And that way it'll also pop out a little later. The next step I'm going to hide those, so I'm only working with uh, the center part here. The next step is there's something that I want to add in, and basically this is supposed to be a fiery explosion. And right now it's fiery for one frame, and then it basically all of the fieriness is mostly gone by frame two, and then it just fades out even more from there. So it feels more like a dusty explosion with a little bit of fire in the middle instead of an actual fire explosion. So to fix that, I need this fire to live a few more frames. I'll give it two more frames. So if I click and drag, and then I click and drag again, and move these over two frames, it'll give me these two frames here that I can work with. Right? And I can draw in fieriness. Now I'm gonna pull that magic trick on you guys and show you what I went and drew in there. Right, go inside of here, and there we are. So, frame one, I made even more bubbly so that on frame two, it felt like it was oozing out into these pieces that are flying out. And then frame three is still pretty fiery. Notice the proportion of oranges to browns. And then on frame four, I'm back to where we were before, like this. So, yeah, frame four is where it finally looks like that smoky cloud, but then I've got three frames before that of flamingness, which gives us a nice difference. I'll open up both of these to kind of illustrate. So we can notice that we've got a much fiery version over here. It just hangs around just long enough for it to feel like it was flaming and then it's burning off into that smoke. And then we got the one over here that just kind of goes straight to smoke with just a little bit of light in the middle. How fiery you want to make it feel is up to you. So there's one other thing on this that I want to adjust. You see like the flame is rolling in and it's looking all right. And you're probably wondering how in the world I approach this, and I'm going to kind of give you some insight into how I handle 
lots of different shapes. I mean, we've got um, one, two, three different colors, and they're all very different, and they're all doing their own things. So how do we, in between that, just show you real quick. So it's not easy. That's the short answer. If you want, you can turn on outline mode. I can get rid of the uh, layer with the strands because I don't need that right now. And I can kind of guess where the different layers are, but it's really not clear. It's sort of hard. I, I can click around on different edges to see my active layer, but that's a lot of guesswork. The key to knowing where you're at is turning off onion skinning, actually, and scrubbing through your frames. And this is how animators used to do it in the olden days, is they would flip their pages over and over again, and only when they were in the fine detail did they actually use uh, the light board, the equivalent of what we use for onion skinning, to look at those details. So by looking at this, I can kind of gauge by motion how it's feeling. So I can see that this circle is appearing pretty rapidly. So I can just draw a line there, fill it with that color. It was a little better. Just gives the eye something to hold on to as it grows. Also, this in between is kind of awkward here. That line is really straight. Let me put that down to 0.1 here. What I'd rather it did be something more like this. It just feels a little more natural. So that's coming in there. This needs to match up with that. There we go. I'm noticing something else too, and that's this guy here, this orange shape, pops away and then becomes this. Rather than having it pop away, let's keep it. Keep it around for a while. And this shadow sheet should be coming in. Like so. Leave a little bit of it on there. So flipping the frames is the way to go when you're doing these kinds of shadow shapes. And that's why the keyframe jumper plugin I have found to be so helpful is because like I'm always flipping around and I don't want to flip like when you're jumping a gap of a health frame it's a super pain. If, if you don't have the keyframe jumper I recommend checking out tutorial number one where I explain how to install it. Adobe, um, you can get an Adobe account for free even if you're a student and you're using school software you can get your own Adobe account which you can use to download the plugin. Let's see. I'm just basically cleaning up the keys in this frame, in this tutorial. I'll probably only do a couple of in-betweens on this tutorial and then I'll finish it up in the next one. I don't know, this is uh, giving me some trouble here. I want the primary bump to start up further so it looks like it's traveling downward. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to pull this off. It's feeling a little better. I'm going to need something sooner or else it's just not going to make sense. Go. Blow that out, see how that looks. Alright, look at it from a little further away. Yeah, it feels like it's cradling down and around. Flipping constantly, basically. 
And if I like how that's feeling, you do a control enter, test it out like that. Yeah, I like that rolling motion that's going on in there. So you can see how the bubbling shapes are kind of popping out. And I could probably make them ooze out even more. It's all about what kind of timing and what kind of emotion I want to go for. Um, right now it's feeling like a nice mixture of violent explosion and then also kind of bubbly at the same time. It's a fine line to walk, but I like it. All right, now this guy's giving me trouble. So basically that point is there, which goes to there, which goes back up to here. If we look at these in isolation, so let's see. Create some keyframes so we can illustrate this. Put that there. Put that there. Because it's freaking hard to show you with all those shapes. I need to skin that, that guy. You can see the problem. So we got a guy here who goes over here and then up to here. It creates this pattern, zigzag. I see this kind of stuff in beginner animation all the time. Even a lot of advanced animators are kind of lazy. They have stuff wobbling like this and it's like jittering all around and well, we gotta stop that. So let's stop it. It ends here, today. So the way to solve that you can see the three points here, right? There, there, and there. I like my first frame. I'm going to leave it. i got to decide which frames I'm going to change. Obviously, somebody needs to change. The best candidate for change is the middle frame. Well, maybe not. Usually, it's the middle frame. It's one of the middle frames. In this case, it's the second middle frame. Because you see this guy up here? I actually like him, too. So it's like, man, this guy's wobbling all over the place. He's like, out, in, out back out again. Okay, I'm going to change this guy. Alright, I can't see the one before it because onion skinning is a pain. So i got to turn on this version of onion skinning. And I can see that point there, that point there, and that point there. That's all I really need. So I can come on in and put that point in between the two. And then I have to turn back on uh, fill so I see what the heck is going on. So I can fill that in. And now, it's a little better. What I'm getting now is an angle here, steep here, flat here, a little more angled there. Again, rocking all around, back and forth from frame to frame, it's bad news. So in this case, I gotta look at the bigger shapes as a whole. If I get too tied up in this, I'll, I'll screw up too. So. In this case, I need to knock this guy back because he's just too steep. That's for sure. Okay, he's knocked back. Can knock this guy down while I'm at it. To kind of help out that other motion that I had going on over here. I get distracted easy. I move on to other tasks and things all the time. All right, so comes down. And then it floats up. Huh, not bad. I still want this shape to be preserved. Well, I don't have thick and thin pressure sensitivity turned on. And that guy's coming up too high. I'll knock him down just a little bit. Remember that you are in control of these shapes. They are not in control of you. You can Put them wherever you please. Oh my gosh. If they'll listen. As it's like being unruly and not doing what I want it to. Alright. Alright, let's see how that looks. Yeah, there's no more rocking going on in there. I mean... Sometimes you want it to rock, but this time I didn't want it to rock. So let's quit rocking. Let's look at it nice and small. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like it. I think it'll in between nice. Nicely. I took English class. All right, I just hit F7 here to create an in between. Got that guy there. Oh boy, is that a wobbler? Looks like a wobbler. No, actually, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty good. That guy's gonna be dead, so I won't bother in between that. Hmm, what's going on? Oh, it's becoming that shape. I was confused. Don't worry, I got this. I know what I'm doing. So I've got to consider that it was still moving forward right here. And now it's moving backwards up here. So maybe instead of just moving backwards here, it's going to stay on it. So I'll show you what I mean. Turn off onion skinny. So forward movement and then let it shrink in place a little bit before it retracts back upward on the leading edge, if that makes sense. And this guy is blinking light. Sometimes when you have a color fading over time, um, it's easy to lose track of what the heck is going on. It's just easy to lose track anyways, so changing colors up is just making it trickier than usual. It's hard to see. I'll turn on outline onion skin, which makes it easy to see. Come over here. What's going on? That guy is reappearing. I don't know. Am I crazy? Oh. First off, he's lightening up, which he shouldn't. Second off, I've got him duplicated on the wrong layer. So I'll delete that. Check my frames, make sure nothing's blinking. Oftentimes when you miss an in-between, it's easy to spot because it blinks. Then we got our final uh, frame right here. Flash, go away. Don't, don't do that. Oh, heck. I'll give this guy one more frame of glory. Glorious screen time before he dies. And then the kill frame on this is not done yet, so make sure I grab the right color. I'll just have this eat away asynchronously. Like so. so there's more of a gap here eating away than down here. Just check that. It's hard to check that animation with the uh, outline onion skin on. There we go. That's easier to check. Check your stuff, guys. It's it's the way to go. Oh, outline onion skin. Wait. Right, I knew that. That's pretty much just shrinking in place up here. And you know, we've got this extra frame over here, so this this is like the biggest shape in the entire animation, this big bubble up here. And it deserves deserves slow and graceful death. Not like a fast one some of those other shapes. There we go. We got that frame, that whole frame, and all we're going to use it for is just one little shape. Maybe two. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do two because it's a shame to just only have one tiny little bubble at the very end of my animation. You got that little whoop at the very end, and that little bubble up there just makes it feel like uh, like it's quality, it's quality animation. And that's the goal, right? That's really all that matters is that it's quality. This guy's shrinking too fast. What's he doing? Give him another frame too. Look at that. Now we got four whole shapes at the end of the animation there.
All right, so we've got our keyframes cleaned up and refined. We've got everything in between on twos. And whoops. And now we're ready to in between the rest of it on ones and get it feeling nice and nice and smooth. So I hope you learned something.